Hello, and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. In this video, we are getting a little bit more advanced and we are using the profit formula in order to solve for break even. Um, now, in our prior videos, we went over how to use the basic formula to find break even point in units and break even point in sales dollars using these two formulas. In this video, we'll be focusing solely on calculating it using this profit formula here revenues minus variable costs minus fixed costs equals profit. Um, now, if you would like to follow along as we go through this, um, I will include a link below to our website as well as to this particular spreadsheet. Okay. So if you need to pause this video, get your spreadsheet ready, feel free. Otherwise, get ready to follow along. So I'm going to hide these two uh, areas here. That way it's just a little bit easier for us to fit everything on one screen. And let's take a look at a few examples of this alternative method solving with our profit formula. So we have a company who sells its units for $30 per unit and has a variable cost of $17 per unit. Now the company has fixed costs of $455,000 and they want us to find what is the company's break-even point in units. So in order to do this, we are going to have to use this profit formula here. Um, and this profit formula, I do have a little bit of a key over here to the side so you can see what each of these uh, variables mean. But let's go ahead and try plugging in what we have so far for G. So first things first, I need my sales price per unit. They tell me that the sales price per unit is $30. So I'm going to start with my $30. Next, we need number of units. But that is what we are solving for. So we are trying to solve for our break-even point in units. So that is actually our unknown for this problem. Next, I need my variable cost per unit. Uh, according to this, variable cost per unit is $17. And again, I do not know the number of units. Next, I need my fixed cost. That's $455,000. And then I need my profit. Keep in mind, this whole video is all about break even. So how would we break even? We would have a zero profit. Breaking even essentially means that my revenues are just enough to cover my costs. So I'm going to know in order for me just to cover my cost to break even, how many units do I have to sell? So profit for break evens will always be zero. Now we simply have to solve for X, and here's where I hope that you guys are comfortable with some of uh, some basic algebra, uh, but I'll run through it with you. First thing I'm going to do is combine like terms. So 30X minus 17X, that's 13X minus 455,000 equals zero. Uh, next, I'm going to start isolating my X, so I'm going to add 455,000 each side. And last but not least, uh, again, trying to isolate X, so I need to divide 13 on both sides. So if I take 455,000 and divide it by 13, I will find that my X equals 35,000 units. Now you notice when we were going through this, it was pretty easy to pick out a lot of these elements that are in this formula. Sales price per unit was provided. We realized that our X was the one we were looking for. Variable cost per unit was provided. Fixed costs were provided. And our profit was zero. Now, what happens when we move to H, where it's a little bit more complicated? This time, let's kind of flow through these first before we get to our formula, since this one's a little bit more advanced. So B Company plans to sell 10,000 units of their product for total sales of $500,000. If the company has variable costs of $35 per unit and fixed costs of $37,500, what is the company's break-even point in dollars? Okay, so a little bit more advanced here. We are actually going to have to go through a couple steps. But first things first, let's see which of these items we have. So sales price per unit. They actually do not give us directly sales price per unit, but they give us the information we need to solve for it. So for sales price per unit, they give us total sales 
and the number of units we had to sell in order to generate those total sales. So we know if we sold 10,000 units, we get $500,000. So what we can do is divide $500,000 by 10,000 units to find out how much we sell each unit for. So we find that we have a sales price of $50 per unit. Okay. Now, number of units, this is where I want us to be very careful. They're saying they're planning to sell 10,000 units, not that they need to sell 10,000 units to break even. So that 10,000 was really only given to us to find our sales price per unit. So that 10,000 is not our X. We still need to solve for X. Uh, variable cost is $35 per unit. Fixed cost is 37,500. And profit, we're doing break even, so profit would be zero. Okay, so let's plug in what we have. We have 50x minus, here, let me do it the same way as before, just to kind of point out where we're going. 50 for my s, x is unknown. Now, obviously, we don't need these parentheses, but try to stay consistent. We'll take them out in the next step. There we go. So here's my formula. Now it's time to solve for X. So first things first, I'm going to combine like terms. Good. Next, I'm going to add 37,500 to each side. And then divide each side by 15. Now, here's where I want you to pause and ask yourselves, what does X stand for? X stands for the number of units we would have to sell in order to break even, but that is not what this question is looking for. It is asking for break even point in dollars. So it doesn't want to know how many units we have to sell. They want to know what is the total revenue, total sales for all of those units. So in order to find this, we need to take the number of units sold, and multiply it, I shouldn't use X, we're getting too used to that X, 2,500 units and multiply it by the sales price per unit. That will help you find your total sales dollars needed to break even. So 2,500 times 50 means that we would have to generate 125,000 in revenue in order to break even. And just a little extra here, notice that we plan to have sales of 500,000, so we are extremely beating our break even in this example. Okay, one more here. Here they say when C company sells 20,000 units, it has a total contribution margin of 4 million and fixed costs of 25,000. Calculate the company's break-even point in units. So we're not going to bother using this, this chart here simply because they're throwing us a bit of a curveball. So usually when we're doing this formula, let me go ahead and drag it down actually here. Um, usually we have sales price and variable costs, but they're not giving us this. They're telling us total contribution margin. So what we have to figure out, well, what's the to the closest thing we really get to that? And if you have watched our prior videos and you're feeling really comfortable with contribution margins in that video, you'll notice we have sales minus variable costs right here. So really, if we take sales price per unit and minus variable costs per unit, we actually are technically getting our unit contribution margin per unit. So we could replace our SX and our VX with our unit contribution margin per unit. So we're kind of moving around our formula, formula a little bit, almost like combining like terms, right? So for example, here in these prior two examples, when we took our sales price and we minused out our variable cost, that 13x, that 13 was our contribution margin per unit. That 15 was our contribution margin per unit. So we're going to do the same thing here since they're giving us contribution margin information instead of directly sales and variable cost. 
Now, the only issue is it has to be in per unit amounts, right? So we are going to convert this from a total to a per unit amount. So let's go ahead, this next part. Let's do that math. I'm just gonna do it off to the side here. So 4 million divided by 20,000 units. That means our unit contribution margin is $200 per unit. So essentially when we minus out our sales price and our variable, co our variable cost from our sales price, we find that the amount left over for unit contribution margin is $200 per unit. Next, let's finish off our formula. Fixed costs are 25,000. And we know that our profit is zero because we are doing break evens. Okay. So last but not least, we simply have to solve for X. So that means we have 200 X. Let's add 25,000 to each side to start isolating our X and then solve for X. Okay, divide each side by 200. That means that we would have to sell 125 units in order to break even. Okay, so hopefully now that we've kind of gone through a few of these examples and, you know, we've done a little bit more advanced than we normally would really need to see when we're just doing an intro version here, hopefully you feel a bit more comfortable with continuing on and doing some more um, more challenging options and practice. Um, remember on our website, tlctutoringcompany.com, there are some additional practice quizzes where you can go ahead and get a little bit more practice if you do need to prepare for an exam. I will ensure, uh, we'll make sure to include a link to that in the description. And remember, if you have any questions, if you have any special requests, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. So until next time, keep up the great work and happy studying.